Welcome to Heron Park, just outside Kalispell, Montana, by a few miles. In fact, it's just beyond Foy's Lake, and I did a video on Foy's Lake. If you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you do, it's a good one. Now it appears some type of event is going on the day I decided to do this hike. With so many bicycles, it must be a biker rally here at Heron Park. Let's giddy up. So we're now at Heron Park, and there are maps here at the trailhead you can pick up. We're gonna be heading up this way, up this trail, with our little handy map. Let's giddy up. So the activity that's going on here is called the 24-hour bike race. Now what bicyclists do is they bicycle the Fair and Park area for 24 hours. For those that can last it, pretty interesting race. So a lot of people have camped out overnight here for this event. Now the event starts at 10 a.m. It's currently 9.20, so I better giddy up. So far, we've been heading up Notch Trail. At least I hope it is. But a lot of trails in Heron Park here. So this is the first signposting I've gotten to. So you take this trail, the family trail. We're gonna continue up Notch Trail. So Notch Trail, it's a very nice trail so far. You probably run into a pretty steady about 15% incline, 10, 15% and there's not a lot of rocks on it so great trails for bicyclists so we've come to another sign posting here so notch trail indicating the trail we just came up here and then to Plump Creek Road, hit up this trail. We're gonna continue on Notch Trail this way.
Now it's currently 10 o'clock, so the bicycle race has officially started. I assume they're gonna be on me in no time at all. But I think we're getting pretty close to the top here. Now what I understand on this 24 hour bike race, they're pretty lenient in the different entries that can be in it. You can actually have teams. So you don't have to go 24 hours yourself. You can switch off back and forth between people. And you can have single riders too that just make a couple laps and call it a day. So at this point, you have this signage from the U.S. National Forest, and it does specify that this whole area that we're looking at was a glacial area long, long ago during the Ice Age. Now, it does specify also, which is interesting, is 20,000 years ago, you'd be standing under almost 1,500 feet of glacial ice at this point. So from here, you get an absolutely wonderful view of Foy's Lake and of the Flathead Valley. Now Foy's Lake, you can clearly see the aqua blue water in it. So on the mountain range over there, you can see a little bit of smoke, but so far this year, it hasn't been a bad year for smoke in Montana at all. Now, I think that smoke is probably coming from the Elmo fire, which I understand isn't as bad as what it was. It's last I looked, it was 67% contained. Let's get you up. So just a little ways up from that sign we were just at, you got this picnic table here. Absolutely wonderful place. Sit down, have a picnic with the beautiful views. Not sure who brought this picnic table up here, but I sure wouldn't want to be the one doing it. So we're currently at 3,890 feet. That's 1,185 meters. So when I started this morning, it was 55 degrees. It's currently 65 degrees, so it's gone up 10 degrees since we've been hiking. And it is mid-August, beautiful day out, not a cloud in the sky. And as I mentioned, there's no smoke either. It's pretty unusual for Montana in the summer, mid-August, but it is absolutely beautiful. So at this point, we've made it to the Overlook Trail. Now, we're gonna take the Overlook Trail down this way, and we're gonna connect up to the Family Trail and loop back in to the trailhead. Now, after the Notch Trail Outlook, where we saw that sign posting, it was steady incline after that. So at this point, we've gotten to the highest point 
will be at. It's 4,000 feet or 1,220 meters and some just absolutely beautiful views through the trees here. Change of plans. So looking at this map, I think we got to change a plan. Instead of going down Overlook Trail here, I think we're going to continue to go up it, and it continues on, and then the trail will come down, and then we'll be able to connect up to the family trail. Now there's some, something up here called Foy's Overlook, so that sounds cool to check out. Let's giddy up. So we've now come to another trail juncture. Boundary Trail goes this way, and it loops all along back pretty far. And then we've got Overlook Trail this way, which we just came up. Now Overlook Trail continues this way, so we're gonna giddy up and go this way. Now I mentioned there was something called Foy's Overlook. Now I never saw anything, anything scenic. So not sure what Foy's overlook is, but let's giddy up. So Heron Park encompasses 120 acres of county park, and it was uh, purchased in 1977 from the previous owner, Ivan Heron, and he also donated a large portion of the land also to the county. So far, I haven't seen a great deal of people out on the trails hiking it with that bicycle event going on. Quite a few bicyclists on the trail at this point, but I'm really surprised there's not more people out on the trails. As like I mentioned, this is only minutes from the Kalispell area. Let's giddy up. So I keep telling you we're at the highest point we're gonna be at. This is definitely it. We're currently at 4,092 feet. That's 1,250 meters. Now, as mentioned, Heron Park has a lot of trails it encompasses. It has one that actually goes 13 and a half miles to Blacktail Ski Resort area. We're not gonna take that today. We're just gonna mainly focus on the Fair and Park trails around this area, as they're just beautiful views from here. Now, for this hike of the Heron Parks trails, I brought with me Summer Honey Seasonal Ale. It's a local brew from Big Sky Brewery out of Missoula. Not much for a description on it, that's about it. Let's break it open and see what we got. Still chilled from being in my backpack from the hike. Very nice aroma. It's a very good beer. Nice light beer. Light color to it also. Now the picture of it, the summer honey ale, has a bear in old fashioned swim trunks with a surfboard. So as you can see, the sign postings of the trails has continued to be very good. It was only just at the beginning of the trails you didn't really know which trail you were getting on. Let's giddy up. So as you've seen a couple times, they've had maps out on the trail, which is nice. It does specify we're right here. And we're gonna be taking the family trail back to the parking area. And we could take the direct route, a little bit shorter 
but let's enjoy the trail down the family trail. Let's giddy up. So if you saw there, that bicycle he was on, it was mainly moved by his arms. So if you got one of those bad boys, I would have to say these Heron Park trails, they are pretty much handicap accessible. Thought a bike was coming. So yeah, it's wide trails and not a lot of rocks in them. So a vehicle like that, no problem going on these trails. Let's giddy up. Now family trail doesn't have much of an incline at all, but still beautiful views. At this point on the trail, they have a plaque here for the wax current plant, which is this plant right here. Now, it, evidently the berries it produces, they're edible, but they're not very flavorful. So, not a favorite among the deer. But it does specify the caterpillars love to eat the leaves of the wax current plant. So here's another plaque, and the plaque describes the Oregon grape plant. Now, it's the closest relative to, the, to a true grape itself, and it's a very tart flavor to it. And so since it's so tart, it's not commonly eaten, but it is edible. It's uh, mainly used in ointments and dyes rather than food. So here's another plaque. This one describes the ponderosa pine. Now ponderosa pines, the most distinguishable factor with them is the needles themselves. They grow to be about five to seven inches long. And then also to distinguish ponderosa pines from other pine trees. They have a thick bark to them and that allows them to survive in severe temperatures as well as low intense forest fires. Another plaque here. This one's on the Rocky Mountain Juniper. This is right here. Now the Rocky Mountain Juniper it's been dated at up to 65 million years old, meaning these trees probably lived with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it's distinguishable factor. I don't see, well, there's a few right there, but are its little blue berries on it. Now those little blue berries were used by Native Americans, specifically the Salish tribe, to cure colds. Let's giddy up. 